Right, so for anyone who doesn't know, this is part of a project to plant a tree for every single day of 2023, uh, which was a very foolish New Year's resolution. It's going to be fun to find out how that works. Um, but this is every week I go through and I check how they are doing, so let's get on with that. So first up we have this macadamia. It did test, spend a long time stagnating, but it is finally showing some decent growth. So this is definitely macadamia integrifolia. You see the three leaf arrangement. Uh, in the other species, Tetraphila, you have four leaves in that sort of top cluster. So next up we have one of our Thormatophyllum bipinatophidium. So this currently doesn't look like much, but it should turn into a nice tree. Obviously it hasn't done any growing because it only went in about two days ago. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look unhealthy by any means, and the chickens haven't been here yet, so I'm happy. Next up we have the Eastern Tree Allo Alloydendron Barberry, which you can see is nice and green and healthy. There's a little bit of paleness towards the middle there, but as we seem to be drying out and the sun is moving into a position that should be more favourable for it, I expect those to sort of uh, blend in quite well. Uh, but it's a nice texture, it's nice and solid, so I'm happy with that. Next up we have Sapple Palmettos, which pattern named apple palmetto. Uh, some wonderful little trees. So you can see there is a new leaf coming here. It doesn't seem to be moving very fast, but it is there. And it's sibling in very much the same position. Two leaves coming along in the center here. Neither of them fully open yet, but both of them on their way. Next up we have our pink mangoes. This is one of the ivory type varieties, a long slender mango. They do seem to grow true from seeds, so it pop a little seedling in here. And it's coming up really nicely. You can see the red is the healthy new growth there. Then we have this Spezia garciana, which is the tree hibiscus or snot apple. This has already grown pretty well, but it looks like there's another growth point right in the center, just there. Then we have this little south sop, which is a known Amiricata. You can see it's had a little bit of insect damage on some of its leaves, which is quite unusual because these are very toxic trees in their own right. Uh, but it will probably be a fairly specialist thing, and it does seem that all the damage is healing. You can start to see browning around the edges of the damage. There's still a couple of growth points active, so it's still growing even as it starts to dry out, so hopefully we'll, get, we'll see a little bit more growth on this before it stops for the winter. And we've also got a little bit of growth coming on this little bay laurel, uh, Laurus nobilis, which is not as speedy, it's, these growth points have been opening up for a while and they're not going fast but they are coming along which is nice. Next up our Bauhinia pitesiana which has been looking pretty good and it is still looking nice and healthy generally it's just getting a little bit you can see of bleaching here because as the nighttime temperature goes down we're getting a lot more dew and that is settling on these leaves and then when the sun comes out they're getting a little bit scorched. Um, which does seem to be just as bad on the new leaves as the old, and that might lead to a little bit of leaf drop soon, but hopefully nothing too major, and hopefully it can tolerate that by now. Next up we have our Washingtonia filifera, which is not growing fast, but I'm fairly sure this leaf was closed when it went in. In fact, I'm certain it was closed when it went in, and this one has appeared since it first went in. It just, palm trees don't tend to do things in a particularly speedy fashion. Now, this is one of the trees I didn't plant. Uh, <laughs> So this is a rain tree, which is kind of suffering here. So I, I did mark it out because I'd intended to plant a tree here um, and then found a tree that I quite wanted growing, which is a native uh, tree. So this is the rain tree Philonopta violacea, which is a really interesting one for sort of soil holding and then also for its natural toxicity. So it produces a certain amount of rhodonone from its roots, which is quite an unpleasant chemical if it gets into waterways, but it's a very good one for sort of Adding a little bit more balance, making sure you don't have pests just moving between all your trees freely. This is a good interrupter of that. But unfortunately the mole rats have decided this is an excellent spot for tunnelling. I suspect they've done a little bit of nibbling of the base of its Dracaena that I put in as a companion plant. Um, and in the process they have dug up an awful lot of soil here. Uh, goodness knows quite what for. But anyway, it isn't dead, but it's not in its best state ever either. So through here you can see the leaves of a healthy little jackfruit seedling, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, so, so jackfruits are heter Articarpus heterophyllus. They are a sort of lowland forest plant. They, they do need a little less light than we tend to get here in Zambia because we're quite tropical and medium high altitude. Uh, so the sunlight can be pretty intense. And so a little bit of shade will be good for it. And it's also quite close to some other trees that have been coming up and an established mango tree, which should protect it from the worst of the, worst of the sunlight. 
here we have a tree that needs no protection from sunlight and probably is one of the few that is going to be appreciating the fact that we're coming to the end of the rainy season now. So this is Euphorbia tirucali, which is also called the pencil tree. It's sort of native, um, but it is most important to check the bases of these because they can be inclined to rock, because this was grown from a truncheon. Uh, so I did let it dry out for a good couple of days before I put it in. And you can see there's no discoloring around the base there, which is good, because that means it's not been getting too wet and starting to rot back. So in amongst these Dracaena leaves, you can see uh, a fairly fragile little Cyacris romanzofiana, so this is a Brazilian queen palm. It isn't dead. It hasn't really perked up since last time. It's not that surprising. We've had a fairly dry spell. Its leaf texture is still less than I would like. And it is looking like it's starting to brown towards the base, which isn't great, because this one can't sucker, unlike the phoenix. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it, and hopefully it will improve with a little bit of water. So this tragic little twig just here uh, was a Paranari uh, curatifolia, curatellifolia, sorry, um, which is the Impundu bean ormabola plum, which is a very significant local fruit tree. They do not transplant well, and this one has been taken off the list because... Uh, I suspect it transplanted extra poorly. Another Cyagris Roranzofiana, which was transplanted at the same time. This one is in a significantly better state. Nice, firm leaves. Sorry, a bit of grass getting in the way there. Um, and good texture, and I'm, I'm generally happy with that, so I'm, I'm thinking a little bit more shelter here has done all the difference we needed. So I want to save a while, while it lasts. This is Phoenix Reclinata, which is one of the native palms. So this is the wild date palm. You can see a certain amount of sunburn here or exposed leaves. A lot of this again will probably have to do with a bit badly timed dew as well. But the central leaves are nice and healthy. It's not browning underneath the, the covers and there's a nice new little leaf poking up in the middle here so I'm very happy with that. Okay so then we come to waterberries. So I planted four little seedlings in here and they spent a very long time looking like they're all going to die. Uh, because they aren't always that reliable in transplant I did plant them intending to knit them together as they grow. And we have now got one, two, uh, three showing growth, but the fourth one is still refusing to acknowledge that it is still alive. But I'm overall happy with that. In this little tangle of weeds, we have a little lychee seedling. So this is one of 17 or 18, I think, I grew from seed, of which quite a few are now in the ground. This is a little bit sunnier than I would like, but the sun will move slowly northward, which will mean some of the trees just to the north of this will protect it through the driest months, so that should suit it well. It's looking pretty healthy at this point, so I'm happy with that. And its sibling that went in on the same day, you can see some pale reddish new growth just over there by my finger, coming up quite nicely, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that too. Deep within a spider web here, so I don't want to touch that in case I disturb the spider who's a lovely little Euprostenopsis which is one of the ones that can look up and down at the same time because of the position of its eyes. Um, this little jackfruit is coming up nicely. You can see a pale tender green leaf coming up right in the middle there. So it is not suffering too much from this drying out we've had. I have given almost all of these plants a litre of water yesterday, uh, which should help tide them over. Um, and we might still get some light rain through April, but probably nothing major to soak the ground again. I've also planted a sub canopy in this area, three little Paturic Labra, so this is the Sabanut which is a South American uh, sort of swamp tree, which does very, very well here. And you can see this one has only gone in recently. It does have a nice growth pit tip coming up, but that won't have changed since it went in. I take off most of the leaves of these to stop them from uh, drying out too rapidly. You can see what happens when I don't take off all the leaves. So I forgot, because I was doing this at night when these went in. Um, and you can see the lower leaves are yellowing off, so I'll just pluck those off. They come off quite straightforwardly. Um, and that's going to reduce the sort of water stress on this little sapling just a little bit. And a third of these little sava nuts went in on the same day. You can see this is a nice healthy growth here. Now at this point, because it's only recently gone and it's only had a couple of days to start showing stress, the first thing we worried about is we were seeing browning on these young tender leaves. There is a bit of sunburn on some of the older leaves. But providing the growth point is healthy, that will be replaced. So I'm happy with that. Another plant that qu requires quite a lot of shelter, so this is the African oil palm, Elias guineensis, I think. 
um, which is one of the probably most hated crops in the world, but it's quite a pretty little palm tree. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it as a plant, and actually as an oil producer, it is much less space demanding than things like sunflowers and soy. Um, and you can plant it in mixed plantings much more readily than you can with those and still harvest a decent amount of oil. Uh, so they're not looking sunburnt, which is the first concern. And the second concern will be, as we dry out, making sure the wind doesn't dry them out too much. They're not too exposed here. And this one has a nice new leaf coming up. And if we can keep that going and keep that going through winter, we should get a decent sized palm relatively quickly here. Its sibling is in a much more sheltered position and will probably require a lot less water during the dry season. They can be very, very tolerant of our dry seasons, again, provided they're kept out of the wind. This is one of the plants I think of as nearly native because it is native in at least two neighboring countries and possibly up to four more. Um, so it would have sooner or later made it into Zambia. It just uh, hasn't yet by its own accord that I'm aware of. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty st sturdy plant, but it does need to be kept out of the wind. And we have Rolf, the Rolfia. Uh, which is a, a wild quinine tree, a nice toxic one which should form a good barrier to pests. You can see some nice vigorous leaves around the tips. The older leaves, which all grew up in its original location, which is much shadier, starting to yellow off. So I'm going to start taking them off just a couple at a time, just to feed the soil around and reduce the water stress as we dry out. Um, you can see there's a little bit of new growth starting to come there, which is really good. Uh, we've got a pecan which is Caria illinoinensis, which is probably the most temperate tree I have planted yet. As we go into winter, we'll probably see a couple more. This is actually one of the only wind-pollinated plants we've got, as far as I know. Uh, but it is healthy enough. There's no sign of any sunburn that wasn't present when it was in the nursery. It did seem pretty well sun-hardened, and the growth tip doesn't seem to have changed. So hopefully that will be starting to come up as we cool down a bit. And we've got another nut from a completely different uh, environment. So this is uh, Anacardium occidental, which is the cashew. These were not originally counted because they transplant particularly poorly, but they seem to be taking well, so I'm happy with this one, which has some lovely new growth. And this one, this lovely little one, this one. And somewhere in this tangle, there's one that was damaged by insects, but is coming up nicely. So you can see these tender leaves just in the crook of my hand here. Oh, new leaves since its uh, leaves got folded up by a caterpillar wanting a place to be picked. They have a companion in another Brazilian queen palm, so this is the uh, Cyagris romanzofiana again. And it's nice and firm on the central stem. The original leaves did all flop over uh, and I've trimmed all that went brown but one of them is still green so it's still photosynthesizing so I'm leaving that until this one in the center opens up. Uh, as I mentioned, pecans are wind pollinators, so this is another of the same variety. It does have a short shift between the male part being produced and the female start becoming receptive, so they can be self-fertile to a degree in some environments, but uh, it's good to have another one downwind, so this is another pecan tree. And it looks healthy enough. Again, the growth tip doesn't seem damaged, so I'm hopeful that will start opening up into some new leaves soon. It might just be a little hot for them to do that right now. So here we have a Sagris from Ranzofiana again. This is the, one of the first ones that went in. And it was pretty open when it went in, but it's still looking nice and healthy. There's no sign of sun stress. Surprisingly, the weaver birds, who often strip these, strip these long leaf strands off for their nesting, don't seem to bother this one at all. Um, but that might just be because it's in quite a lot of grass, so they haven't really noticed it yet. When it gets taller, I'm sure that'll change. So this little seedling is, I think, one of the Masao trees that I planted last year, which I thought the chickens had entirely destroyed. Um, and when I was planting Sagras, I noticed there was still some life there. So I'm really pleased to see it starting to come back up again. There is another Sagras over here that went in on the same day. This was less open to begin with. It's looking nice and healthy, but not really changing very rapidly. Still very much in its juvenile form with these fused leaves. And deep within here, we have another little jackfruit seedling. So this is being given lots of extra shelter because again, this is a very sun sensitive tree while it's growing. Um, it is quite close from the morning side to a little sickle bush, which we discussed in the planting episode, what will happen to that as this grows. Um, but it doesn't have that much shelter currently to its north. There are some trees coming up that will be bigger than it uh, to the north and to the 
west, which should shelter it from the hottest uh, dry season sun and afternoon sun. But currently it's looking pretty healthy, so I think my shelter is doing the trick. Another little lychee tree, you can see a little bit of sun damage that was present on this one last time, so there's no, no real change there. It hasn't got worse, hasn't got better. But it's otherwise a pretty healthy little, healthy little seedling, and I'm sure it'll recover from that little insult in no time. Around this one, you can see the Dracaenas actually suffered a lot from that first sun. The lower stems of them are pretty healthy, so they will bounce back. They'll probably suck her out from the bases. But the, the lychee itself isn't too bad. Again, there's a little bit of burning on the tips of the growing points. Because lychees tend to have a sort of triangular growing point and the tip is just sort of a sheath, uh, this probably will recover from that. It's a nice texture, nice and firm, upright leaves, so I think it's pretty happy there. At this time of day, this little seedling gets more shelter, but later in the day it'll get a lot less when it matters more. But this is a Bauhinia variegata, which is a, also called an orchid tree. It's a beautiful tree um, and gets covered in very ornamental flowers. It does have a few sort of famine food uses, but not particularly useful beyond being a nitrogen fixer and just nice to look at. We have a little banana tree here. So this is Musa exparatissia. So same uh, species hybrid as most edible bananas. It is coming up pretty well. Uh, there's not been any sort of sign of a new leaf yet, but the leaves are nice and open, which means they're not too water stressed. These fold right back when they are. So I've been getting enough water in between the dew and the very limited rain we have had. So that is pretty good, I'm happy with that. On to our most depressing little section. I'm still not taking this one off the Count, and you can actually see there's a certain amount of green here that seems to be moving up which is to say this stem is probably pushing out and may actually open out and recover from the really bad sunburn this little phoenix reclinatus suffered not long after it first went in so I'm, I'm pleased with the progress it's making it's still a very distressing little plant to look at though now this here is probably its worst sibling it's really limiting uh, trying to see any sign of life in this one. I'm actually going to take this one off the count because there was some evident green last time. These can suck up from the base so it may reappear on the count at some point but for now it's really not looking it's really not looking good at all which is pretty unfortunate. The third one that went in the same day showing the value of a little bit more shelter. So this is a little bit more close to some acacia trees which shelter it from the afternoon sun. And you can see it right around the base here there's some lovely green that is coming up again. So hopefully that will be opening out and looking healthy again in very little time indeed. Right under those acacias and in some pretty deep shade we've got another jackfruit seedling who is coming up beautifully. So this leaf is new since it went in and there's another one coming along here, so I'm very pleased with that. There's a pandanus or screw palm that's gone in close to this. You can see there's a certain amount of bird droppings on it, but otherwise it's in a pretty good state. And enjoying the relative shelter of its position, we have another little lychee seedling here. In a slightly more exposed position, but with more shelter that went in with it, we have another lychee who unfortunately seems to have been getting a little sunburn on its actual growing tip. So it has lost a couple of little tiny leaves that were coming up last week. But the growing tip itself is showing some activity still, so hopefully those will be replaced pretty soon. And we've got another little lychee seedling deep in its own little thicket, which has some very healthy leaves. So I think these have just gone beyond the stage when the sun intensified, uh, which burned the other one. Uh, so they are nice and healthy, a little bit reddish, so they shall be hardening off to a green quite soon. Uh, with You can see just a tiny little tip still coming up to produce more leaves soon. And we've got another little Bauhinia variegata coming up here. You can see these are fully sun hardened, so there's no sign of any stress at all on that leaf, even though this gets pretty much full sun all day. Very tender little seedling, but very, very hardy. So I'm pleased with that. Only slightly less exposed, but needing to be much less exposed in the longer run. We have a little loquat here, which is another Chinese fruit tree. Uh, so this is uh, Areobotria chinensis which is a fairly lovely fruit when it produces and it isn't, doesn't need that long, usually sort of three to four years in good conditions to start fruiting. Um, it's coming up nicely, you can see the growth points a little bit bent over from this uh, calico that I put just a little too close to shelter it more than, more than it was getting from its location. Uh, but it should recover from that, we'll just end up with a slightly kinky little tree. 
Now, Dracaenus, this is the first of our Dracaenus studentary, so this one was already rooted when it went in, which is why it looks significantly less distressed than the ones that have gone in since. I am rooting a bunch of other truncheons of this, which will probably be going in over a lot of the dry season, because they're pretty hardy once rooted. Uh, but this is looking nice and healthy. The sunburn that it was getting seems to have been mostly uh, covered up by new growth. And yeah, it's a pretty vigorous looking plant and I'm pretty happy with that. Then we have the Livestona, which is a little forest palm. And I'm quite sure this is bigger than it was last week, although I couldn't put my finger on why. I would say this leaf has opened up and you can see right at the bottom here, there's another little leaf coming along. And this is again, this is a forest tree. So there was every reason to expect it would be uh, prone to sunburn here. I did put quite a lot of uh, planting around it, so I put three aloes and three dracaenas and a few pieces of iris in to try and keep it keep it sheltered along with some other uh, succulents, uh, one of the senecios. Uh, and it seems to have worked because this is not showing any signs of stress at all. I had done my best sun harden at first too, which I think probably helped quite a lot. This dracaena studentary was not uh, rooted before it went in. It will have started to produce its own roots by now and you can see the top is actually significantly more erect than it was last week but these older leaves suffered quite a lot of sunburn when they first went in um, and with no sort of water source to back them up it has taken a while for it to start regaining texture there. They're still quite floppy but you can definitely tell from the touch of those that it is taking up water now, so that's good. And the central tip looks healthy, and I'm happy with that. Now, this is a Javan cotton, or Kapok, uh, which is Saber pentandra, which will one day cover most of the trees we've seen since the banana with its, with its canopy. It is currently not doing anything to achieve that goal, though it hasn't shown any growth since it went in. It doesn't look like it's lost anything. There's one side branch that seems like it might have decided to amputate, uh, which is in some ways promising because it shows that it is still active and I didn't accidentally buy a plastic plant. Um, but it hasn't done any real change yet. But that's not that unusual for trees to spend a while settling their roots in before they send anything up. So not worried yet, just would like to see some, some change. A few days after the rest, a little parrot sweet mango is actually looking a-okay. Uh, there's some nice new growth coming on the tip of the larger stem. Some of the smaller stems seem to be losing their growth growth points, but that's probably for the best because then we can have a single trunk to focus on. We have another Dracaena studentary that went in from a truncheon. You can see again this one is burnt. This one is actually water burned primarily because it got uh, rained on quite heavily and sat in a puddle that I hadn't expected. Uh, but it is not showing any deterioration since it went in. Its leaves are actually still a good temperate uh, its leaves are actually still good texture. The growing tip is not 100%, uh, but these can sucker very vigorously. So if this does die, it'll send out from the side, and there does seem to be some decent life in there still. So I'm happy enough with that. Its sibling is more or less in a similar state. This is slightly more sheltered. It was a worse off looking truncheon when I planted it, uh, which is why it, it does look like a pile of handkerchiefs at the moment. Uh, but it seems to be perking up a little bit faster. Nothing too dramatic but it does seem to be sort of heading for the sky a little bit more proactively. What has changed is the Portulacaria afra that I put in as a companion plant here. So this is another one that grows from truncheon. Uh, termites don't usually damage healthy plants but one point when almost all plants are stressed is when they're transplanted um, and especially if they're transplanted unrooted and so you can see termites have just eaten the bark completely off this little tree. I don't know if that will have followed mole rats doing that, because they'll very often do that, uh, even to a healthier plant. Well, what I'll do is I'll come along later with some secateurs, and I'll chop this into the healthy growth and just replant it in the same sort of area, um, because they don't seem to have progressed in the last couple of days. They seem to have got to a certain point and decided they didn't think much of that after all, and it'll reroot very easily once I've done that. Just in here, we have uh, Terminalia mantle, which is the Madagascar almond or Madagascar umbrella tree. Um, as far as I know, unlike the Terminalia catapa, which is also called the Indian almond and sometimes called the Madagascar almond, uh, the seed of this is not edible. Uh, but it is it is growing nicely, which is the important thing here. This will spread out and become a very, very wide set shade tree, which should be ideal for a lot of the other trees that are coming up around here. It'll create a nice subcanopy. I can start putting coffee and star fruit and other sensitive trees under. Here we have another Madagascan tree with a similar growth form, although it's not 
as ideal as a sub canopy because it tends to have a more uh, tanniny effect on the soil. It, it does create quite a difficult soil to garden in when it's implanted in large groups, so I would avoid that. This is Delanix regia, the flamboyant, uh, sometimes called the flame tree, but we'll meet another one that also gets that name later. Um, so this is quite a quite an ornamental tree. It is good for biomass accumulation because it does grow fast and it's constantly dropping leaves and twigs and branches. The only trouble is those are quite acid, so you do need to get other trees established at the same time and preferably avoid planting them in groups which unfortunately most people do because it's very striking having a large group of these turn bright bright red in October. So we've got, so we've got here a fairly unhappy little rose apple. So this is Sigzygium jambos, which is not native, unlike the Sigzygium guinensis we saw earlier. So it's related to the waterberry, but not quite the same. It has a larger, uh, more rose flavored, I guess, fruit. And it is not too bad. You can see there's still spring in these stems. They're still green in these stems. So the stems are alive, it's just reclaiming water from the leaves at a rapid rate because these can be very sensitive to transplanting. You can see it's amputating some stems. This will be uh, brittle and dry in a couple of days and will probably break right off. Uh, but it is keeping some green, so presumably it's not as stressed as it could be. You can see the turmeric is starting to declare its growing season over. So these leaves will brown, turn yellow, and then just crumble down so this will lose a bit of shelter so hopefully it'll perked up before the turmeric dies back too much. And this is another macadamia so this might be another integrifolia or it might be a tetrafilla so at the moment it's only producing twos once it's mature it'll either do threes or fours or stick to twos and ones if it is integrifolia sometimes they will do that uh, but we will see currently it's healthy it's got some new growth on it so I'm pretty happy with that. So this little guy is not a cactus, this is the candelabra tree, or nabum, the uh, Euphorbia ingens, which is a native succulent tree, which is primarily useful because it is toxic, it can be used for fencing, it can be used just as a barrier plant, which is what I will probably tend to use it as. It's also quite a good one for supporting your bees, but specifically not for making honey, because as I mentioned yesterday, it can foul the honey uh, by making it give you a burning sensation when eating it. The bees don't seem to mind, but people tend to. Um, it does it does seem as if we've got some growth happening here this, these actually might be flower buds these little tiny green points coming up here which will still be quite nice to see I would like to see some green growth in the middle here and there do seem to be some tender leaves there that have been a bit sunburned uh, so it might have started and then decided it's not quite the season for it yet but we'll see so that went in with some yuccas which are all starting to stand quite nice and upright although to varying degrees so the best, the medium, mediumest, and probably the worst of these. Now these did come off a large tree, but you can see there is a certain amount of flop there that is beyond just the sort of angling the branches we're doing to get into the light to begin with. I will continue to visit the spots where trees have vanished, uh, just in case they reappear, which has kind of happened once already. Um, but this is a empty so site that did at one point have a little uh, Brachystesia taxifolia in it. Hopefully we're about to see two healthy ones of those. This is a Brachystesia taxifolia a seedling that hasn't disappeared. So these went in a while ago. They're a very ornamental native tree. Uh, unlike the Brachystesia spiciformis, which gets gigantic, these I tend to refer to as dwarf Brachystesias. If they have no competition and if they aren't browsed, they will canopy out at about a meter high. Um, and it's very ornamental and very bonsai. I will probably be pruning them to get them higher than that. Uh, but they are they do flower quite vigorously and that is very good for honeybees without fouling up the honey and they are also yeah just a great food plant for a lot of our native insects right so this should have been the third one but is now the second one i guess uh, so you can see right in the center there you, there's a tiny little cone which should be a growing tip which does seem to be slowly slowly progressing up so we might actually get some new leaves on this before winter which would be great because then it'll be just a little bit more robust to get through the dry season we have in here our little Kigelia africana, which is the sausage tree, which is a very ornamental but also very useful medicinal native tree. Um, so this, the pods of this are pounded to make all sorts of topical medications, both traditionally and sort of more modernly around the world. Uh, so if you've seen Kigelia in shops, that, that's from this tree. Uh, it did lose its growing tip to some very badly behaved caterpillars. I think the woolly bears are probably active, so we'll be watching out for that on our 
on our citrus but uh, it does seem to be gaining some little tiny leaves along the base here which hopefully should turn into new branches and we'll have a healthy little one. It's got a lot of trunk here so it can take a certain amount of damage because trunks are basically just a food storage the trees will use to refeed themselves when they do get stressed. On to more lychees. So we're in a slightly more sheltered spot here so this tender growth has not suffered sunburn here. It does get a certain amount of afternoon sun for part of the year but I think we've mostly passed that point so most for most of the afternoon the sun is now going to be behind the sapling acacia and one of the golden trumpet trees and so that has kept these tender leaves protected from the sun. And we have another lychee that went in on the same day. The four pale leaves at the top there have all grown since they went in. So this is coming up pretty well and I'm pretty happy with that. And then we have the Philanthus emblica, uh, which is also called amla or emblic or the Indian gooseberry, which is an Asian fruit tree which is used in a lot of uh, traditional therapeutic purposes, but it's also got an edible, very sour fruit which is good for making jams and preserves and pickles. And we have another Phoenix Reclinata, which is not looking great, but it's not looking anywhere near as bad as the one I'm taking off the list. Um, and hopefully with a little bit of water and a little bit of time, this will perk back up. There's still decent texture in the base there, not as good as I would like. I do wonder if something's been tunneling around under there because it doesn't seem as firmly rooted as last week. Uh, but they can recover from a lot, these, and so provided we've still got some health in the leaves, I think that will be funneled back in and we should get some growth soon. And here we have another of the Brazilian queen palms. Now this is probably the most transplant friendly of the single stem palms. Uh, they do regenerate their roots much more quickly than something like the phoenix. And so this central leaf is much firmer in a very similar environment. Um, even though this was completely flopped over and had been trampled by some passing pouched rats where it was originally growing. Um, and so I'm pretty happy with that. And its sibling here is a little softer than I might like but it looks healthy enough. It doesn't seem to be getting too much damage anymore, having lost quite a lot of leaf to that uh, when it first went in. Um, so hopefully this will start to straighten up and we should have a decent looking palm tree here in, in a few years time. So deep within the bamboo where you'd think it would be a challenge to get anything to grow, I do seem to have struck gold with this little Heptaplurum, uh, Heptaplurum tenderfilum, which is also called the giant chaffera, or Australian umbrella tree. Um, and it does seem to be coming up pretty nicely. It's slowed a little bit as the rains have eased off. But it's in a pretty good state and I'm pretty happy with that. We have another little lychee seedling who's looking a little exposed. You can actually see a little bit of sunburn because when I first watered it in, this leaf hadn't dried out properly before the sun hit it, which with tender, tender trees can be a real recipe for sunburn. But otherwise, it's looking pretty healthy. Growth point is a little bit brown, but not, not dead by the look of things. Um, so hopefully this will be coming up pretty soon. Next up we have Hamilton, who is a Colophospermum uh, mapani, or just mapani, uh, who is coming up slowly, slowly, having been very slow. The, the first new leaf has been damaged a little bit by insects, but you can see some more coming up behind that, which will slowly open out. So this is a lovely native tree, very good timber, also very good for the honeybees, and just a good uh, soil improving and soil retaining one. And although the Mapani are usually cited as very much a tree of full sun, going in a tiny bit more sheltered to start has clearly been good for Hamilton's sister Aitken. So you can see this red leaf here is more new growth. There's quite a lot of this little branch has been new since she went in now. Um, it's just been nibbled and damaged a little bit since then, but it is coming along quite nicely and I'm pretty happy with that. And because I don't really like the bare soil in between them and I don't really want to overshade them. We've got this little carrot tree who is a very toxic but fairly small tree which should come up as a nice sub canopy between them. And it is nice and firm on the central leaves. The older leaves are a little bit sunburned even though I thought I'd sun hardened this pretty well. But you can see a lovely little tender green new leaf right in the middle there coming up so I'm very happy with that. So it's not coming through as clearly as I'd like. But this is another Euprosinopsis. This is not full grown. This is one of the nursery web spiders. And you can see the wonderful extent of this tangling web around here. They will spend a lot of time running along underneath the web. Um, and that means that their two downward facing eyes right next to their mouth allow them to keep an eye out for predators. But in this complex 3D web at the moment, it doesn't really need those. It's got six other eyes pointing in all other directions and keeping it safe. Right, so I've been concerned that this rough lemon wasn't doing anything as fast as it was getting eaten and it seems like finally it is starting to respond 
to having a lot of citrus swallowtails nibbling away all this old growth. So we've got a lovely little meristem opening up here, some tiny little fresh new leaves coming there. I'm not seeing any others yet, but it's really good that it's starting to do that. So hopefully that'll be bushing out pretty soon. So here in the shadows of my thicket, which is an area that I tend to irrigate a little bit more, so I've got a lot more year-round growth in here. We've got our original uh, Thormatophyllum bicarnatophyllum, which is coming up pretty nicely, actually. There's some nice leaves in the center there, and they're starting to show that much more strongly lobed growth form that is associated with the species. When they're younger, the leaves can be a lot like uh, the Philodendron lucerum, which is one well, I already have plenty of and I don't need to be planting freestanding because that is a climber. Um, so it's nice to see this starting to show its mature form coming up, even if a little bit slowly. And this is the tree tomato, uh, Solanum batasium, which is really looking nice and healthy. There's some lovely red tender growth in the middle there. This leaf is actually new since it went in and I believe this one is too, yes. Uh, so I'm really happy with how vigorous this is looking. These can be very prone to drying out, so it'll be important to keep it watered over winter. Uh, they're also very wind sensitive, which is why this is on the leeward side of that whole thicket uh, that the thalmatophyllum is in. And it seems to be appreciating that pretty well so far. This little thing that looks like a conifer is uh, one of the Australian myrtles, so not conifers at all, it's a flowering plant. Uh, so this is tea tree, um, and it's uh, Melaleuca alternifolia, I think. Uh, and it's looking pretty pretty good, I would say. It had been very pale to begin with when I went in, but that pale growth seems to have hardened off, and I think that was just me not understanding how Australian trees tend to grow, and I'm happy with this. So this is a Moringa olifera, or just Moringa, which you might have noticed in teas. It's also used as a vegetable quite a lot, so the pods particularly are used as a vegetable uh, in a lot of Asian cooking. Um, and it does seem to be coming up nicely. I am concerned that as the sun shifts to the north, this will be in a little bit too much shade, so we'll keep an eye on it, see if we need to do some pruning to get a little bit more light down here as we get into winter. Uh, so that should be everything for part one. Um, I'm filming these in two parts now because it's taking a very, very, very long time to edit them. Uh, so also tune in like two, three days ago for the plant that went in today, um, because it is, it is going to take a lot less time to edit. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, and feel free to watch part two if you enjoyed this, and feel free not to if you didn't.